So I hope that we all hunger for the infilling of the Holy Spirit, not for our own glory, but for God's glory. Okay, and then God wants to fill all people with the Holy Spirit and give them spiritual guidance. God wants to fill all people in Acts 2.17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out of my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. So, that God says in a, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Now, this was prophesied in Joel. That Joel, the prophet, prophesied that the Holy Spirit will come upon all flesh. And it is the desire of God that all flesh, that He will pour the Spirit upon all flesh. So, God's heart is that all Christians will feel the Holy Spirit. Now, some people say, well, you go your way of the Holy Spirit. I go my way of the traditional church. Actually, you know, in Acts 1.8, it says that the Holy Spirit come upon you and re you receive power and you'll be my witnesses to the end of the world. So it's God's heart that all people will be filled with the Holy Spirit to preach, to preach the gospel. And also in Acts uh, 2.17 here, it says that I will pour out of my Spirit on all flesh. God wants to fill all flesh with the Holy Spirit. All Christians, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, we generally ha can see this. People who are Spirit-filled, they are more zealous. They are more, more joyful. They have more motivation. They want to serve God. They have more strength. And they pray for people. And they can see more healing and more change of life. And we can see that people who are not filled with the Holy Spirit, that the, the preaching is not as powerful. And then uh, when they try to change people's life, it's harder. It's just by words, not by the power of the Holy Spirit. And also when they preach or when they pray, it's not as powerful. We can see that. Although some Christians are motivated, uh, they are motivated, but then the motivation is much stronger when they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, before I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I was already motivated to preach the gospel. But after I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I just want to do anything for God. And I'm motivated to continue to do anything God wants me to do, to follow God in any way. And I seek ways to open the way to enter God's perfect plan. I want to enter God's perfect plan. Before I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I just want to do my church work to build up the church. But now I want to do more uh, evangelism and training and transformation of people to the uh, to different churches in the, all over the world and to anyone I come in contact with. So I hope that we all will say, yes, the Lord will come upon us, that He wants to fill, fill us with the Holy Spirit to fill all flesh. And then your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So that is one sign of the Holy Spirit, that He will cause us to prophesy and to see visions and dream dreams. Now prophesy, it could mean prophesy the future, but it could also mean that we can uh, preach the Word of God, uh, you know, that we can prophesy as a prophet to speak to the people, to speak to the needs, to the problems, or we can see the problems of the church or the, of the world, that we can say words that would point out the problems. That is the, the work of a prophet, that we can point out the sins of the churches or how the church can be transformed. So those are ways that, that we are prophesying, that we are saying the word of God as needed by different people. And also, now, to see visions and dream dreams, that some people receive these uh, this gifts. Now, not all people see visions. Not all uh, spirit-filled Christians see Christians, uh, see visions. But they do see the plan of God, they see the, the direction of God. Now, for myself, I see a clear direction that God wants me to go. And uh, now, for me, I have some dreams that um, that could be from God. You know, I will find out more. I will also, I would, uh, I just, you know, pay attention to my dreams. And some of the dreams seems to motivate me to uh, do certain things for God. So 
And then some people have uh, gifts in this area, have stronger gifts of prophecy and seeing visions and dreaming dreams. And then Jesus promised to give us miracles. And we notice in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there it talks about that uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit it includes supernatural gifts uh, that, you know, like uh, prophecy and uh, drive out demons and uh, miracles and uh, uh, to speak in tongues and to interpret tongues. Those are uh, more supernatural signs. So we can see that the Holy Spirit will bring supernatural work. And here in Mark 16, Jesus talked about also miracles. So these miracles actually we generally see more in Spirit-filled Christians. And Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who he who does not believe will be condemned, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will re recover. So he said that go to the whole world to preach the gospel. And he who believes and is baptized will be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe, that they will cast out demons. So Jesus says that we can cast out demons. Now, I noticed that after I experienced the Holy Spirit, when I pay, pray for people, that I saw me more demons being driven out, which I did not see before I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Even though all Christians can drive out demons, but then uh, the anointing is not as strong, so they don't see demons being driven out that easily. And also, uh, we'll speak with new tongues. Now, for me, the first time I spoke in tongue, I did not, you know, I did not make myself speak in tongue. Actually, I, I, I would say to people, don't make people speak in tongue. It's not something we force on people. We don't force people to speak in tongue. And we just come to the presence of God to love God, worship God. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And then and the Holy Spirit can bring speaking in tongue. Now, the first time it happened to me it was like this. There was a pastor who was speaking to one of my church members in a, a, a meeting uh, that I brought my, uh, some of my members there. And then this, this pastor from another nation, he told my member to speak in tongue. Now, for some reason he knew that my, that my member speaks in tongue. And then I was standing behind this pastor. The moment he said, he told that, that Christian to speak in tongue, I was standing behind him and immediately my mouth was shaking. It started speaking in tongue right then. <laughs> so now when I talk about that, my, my tongue start to shake. So that's something that came naturally to me. So I, and I don't want people to tell people to mimic, you know, don't, don't try to mimic speaking in tongue because when people mimic speaking in tongues, it's not speaking in tongues. It, it just can be making sound. That's not speaking in tongues. It has to come from when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, that we worship God and we are filled with the Holy Spirit, and then we start to speak in tongues. The speaking in tongues will help us to have a closer relationship with God and also help us to receive messages from God. Now, also here it says that in verse 18, they will take up serpents and if they drink any dead, anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Now for this too, I think it's in a time of persecution when we are put to a, a place with many serpents or when we are forced to drink poison and then God can protect us. So it's not something that we'll try to do every day. And also they will lay hand on the sick and they will recover. So this is something I experienced many times that I lay hand on the sick and lay hand on different people. And then they, um, then, and then when I lay hand on them, they experience love, joy, peace, and the evil spirit coming out and they experience change of life, touch of the Holy Spirit. 
and it's all so very wonderful, so very wonderful. I've seen so many people experience the Holy Spirit. It's all very, very wonderful. And also the Holy Spirit brings supernatural gifts. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge. Now the word of wisdom, uh, it's that the Holy Spirit will give us say words of wisdom that that we say the right thing at the right time to the to the people that it's uh, is wise words that speak to them that that will help them and change them and words of knowledge is now it has two interpretation one is just know, knowing the Bible very well and then in, in, a, in another interpretation is that we can know something that we don't normally know for instance someone uh, has sickness in a certain part of the body or a person has uh, some sins uh, that he's committing some sins that is affecting him that a person with a word of knowledge that he would know this person has his sins and problem now uh, this is uh, one interpretation now some people say I disagree with that but then with the gift of prophecy it could be similar this person can know someone else's situation or problem uh, uh, that they should not know naturally but then they know because God gives to them so that's another you know the gift of prophecy we explain that so word of knowledge uh, uh, you know even for some people they don't believe that there is such a thing as knowing certain secret things of a person then prophecy would uh, would be would be that too that gift too that to 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 be able to know something because God shows to them to know something okay to another faith by the same spirit now here would not be faith of salvation but faith to perform miracles because he's already a Christian so it's not the saving faith that he already has but faith to believe that he can perform miracles or do great things for God and gifts of healing that he can bring healing to people and then by the by the same spirit to another the working of miracles that he can perform miracles and then uh, now miracles could include different things in the in the Bible that that Jesus did uh, or other uh, prophets did or the disciples did for instance it can be walking on water it can be like uh, Philip who was taken up after he baptized a eunuch of Ethiopia, he was taken up to another place. Now some people say, well, this is a, only a one-time thing. But if God, you know, Jesus said that all the things I do, you would do also. So, and you even do greater things. So if Jesus said that, so we can do different things like walking on water when necessary, when there is persecution that we could walk on water or move the mountains to stop the enemy from attacking us or walk through the walls or walk through a, a prison door uh, that God can uh, perform miracles like that for us so we just follow God love God obey God and take care of our sins now some people just pay attention to miracles and they continue to sin I've heard, uh, you know, a, an African pastor told me that some African pastor, they get power by seek, seeking uh, witchcraft. Now this is very, very dangerous and God hates that. Why do they just want power from witchcraft? And God hates that. When God hates that, God is going to attack the person. Even if he gets more money, some people just want more money and a bigger ministry that is not our purpose our purpose is to follow God and obey God and not just for money or for a bigger church now we want a bigger church but the main thing is that we want to glorify God so God can give us miracles and we don't have to use our own ways God will find ways to help us to perform miracles when we have faith and say in this situation we need this and we pray in Jesus name and we pray and God can do wonderful things and to another prophecy prophecy could mean prophesying the future what uh, things are going to happen it can be prophesied about a person or about a, uh, a church or about a nation it can also be pointing out the needs or sins of a group of people a church or uh, the people of a certain location so prophecy could mean different things and then to another discerning of the spirit that 
that people can discern the evil spirit and also what kind of evil spirit and to another different kinds of tongues and to another the interpretation of tongues so we see that here many of these gifts are supernatural gifts so we see that the Holy Spirit does give us supernatural gifts so we want to trust in God then yes he can give us supernatural gift and also other gifts for instance he can give us gift of playing the piano, leading worship, preaching, uh, counseling, helping people, uh, building a church. He can give us different supernatural or not so supernatural gifts, but actually all gifts are supernatural. And also in Acts 2.17, that in the last days, God says, God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy so they can prophesy and see visions and dream dreams and the men servant and my maidens maid servants i will pour out my spirit on those days and they shall prophesy so god will anoint his servants his servants if we love god we obey god that he will pour his spirit upon us that we can prophesy and he can give to different people now if we see members that have this gift of prophecy or seeing visions or dreaming dreams we want to build up their life we want to build up the spiritual life and we want to help them not to be proud but we want to help them to be filled with the holy spirit that we want to have more people praying together loving god worshiping god believing in god enjoying god and then that the gifts will be strengthened that they can see more visions they can prophesy more more accurately and that they will uh, dream dreams from God. So that is something we want to develop. If we see anyone has that gift, we want to develop that. And any other gift, if we see people have the gift of worship, then we want to train them. We, if we see people have the gift of uh, preaching, even the pastor can let them to train them and let them preach sometimes. And also uh, let them preach in a small groups or let them preach in a home so that to build up their spiritual gifts. So the pastor is not to compete with the people, but to build up the people, to train more people so that they can serve God more efficiently with the spiritual gifts. And then it's very important that we worship in spirit and truth to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And worship with our spirit would include, uh, first our soul would include our mind, that our mind agrees with the Bible and God's will, that in the, ho the whole mind we say, God is wonderful. The Bible is wonderful. The Bible is all true. God is almighty. God is loving. I want to follow God. I want to obey God. I want to obey everything in the Bible. I don't ever want to lie. I don't want to steal, kill. I don't want to do anything bad. I don't want to commit any sin. That we believe that committing any sin will can bring more destruction to our lives. And then when we obey God more, it will bring more blessings. And then we our will we decide to follow and obey God all the for the rest of our life we dedicate our whole life to God we want to totally submit to God and build up positive feelings toward God so this is feelings that we want to as God is remembering us that as the mother cannot forget her suck, suck, uh, suckling uh, baby so we should not forget God also that we should always you know, like God is rejoicing over, over us with, with shouting. So we also would rejoice over God with shouting. God, you're so wonderful. I, I rejoice in you. I like you. I like you. I, you know, I hope we all learn to like God. When you learn to like God, then it's very easy to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we learn to say, God, you're so wonderful. I like you. 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 I enjoy you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I like you. I hope we we'll all learn to do that. The more we do that, the more we'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. And also worship with the whole inner be being that worship with our spirit. So our whole mind, the whole will. My, I dedicate my whole life to God. I, I offer my body as a living sacrifice. I offer my whole life to God. And I really learned to like God, I, that my feelings is all for God. God is my desire. Now, five kinds of prayer to build up the relationship with God. The prayers of grace. That is, 
is declaring God's grace to us. God is loving me. God is kind to us. God is listening to me. When I pray to Him, He's very, very happy. So that is prayer of grace, to declare the grace of God. God wants revival. God wants to use our life. Hallelujah. And prayer of worship is from us to God. Prayer of grace is from God to us, that we declare God's grace to us, that God is blessing us, God is with us, God is coming to us. And then prayer of worship is, is from us to God. God, I love you, I worship you, I adore you, I need you, I hold on to you. So I hope we use words that carry emotions. Lord, I want you, I want to come to you, I hold on to you, I desire you, I really like you. And interactive prayer. It's a combination of prayer of grace and prayer of worship. That whenever I pray to you, I'm happy with, with uh, you are happy with me and bless me, and you will raise me up to a high level. So whenever we pray, we know that God is listening. God wants to bless me. So whenever I pray, He's happy, and I'm happy too. So when I pray, God is happy that I'm praying. God wants to bless me. God will come to me. So that is faith. Believing that God wants to come to me, that's interactive prayer. Believing that when I pray to God, God is happy. God is responding to me. That helps us to be joyful. So whenever we pray, we say, God is happy with me now. God is very happy with me now. God is blessing me now. That is from the Bible. Sometimes people say, how do you know God is here? Well, God has promised when we come to Him, He will come to us. So He's for sure here. And He will bless those who love Him. So when I'm loving Him, He will bless me. So this is from the Bible. I'm just holding on to the promise of the Bible that there is interactive prayer. Whenever I pray, I know that God is happy and He responds to me. Therefore, I'm very happy. Now, this is very important. So every day, uh, I hope you do this too. When I wake up, I say, God, you're so wonderful. I thank you. I love you. Hallelujah. And you're happy with me. So uh, when I believe that God is happy with me, I'm happy too. God is happy with me. God is blessing me today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So that's interactive prayer. And also there's interactive action that Jesus said when you, we uh, give a cup of cold water to a little one, will by no means lose the reward. So even when we do a little thing for God, God will for sure be happy and reward us. So whenever we do the right things to do evangelism, we can say, God is happy with me now and I can rejoice even if the person doesn't believe. Now, I want him to believe, but if he doesn't believe, I'm still rejoicing because I'm doing the right thing. Therefore, I can be joyful. I can be happy. So that is uh, that interactive action that whenever we do anything right, whenever I'm helping people to believe in Jesus, I know God is happy, therefore I'm happy too. I know that God is happy with me. Whenever I'm helping someone spiritually, I know that God is happy, and then I will just thank God, and I, I know that He's happy with me. This way we can be happy all day long, that we can be filled with the joy of the Lord all day long. Now, I'm used to that. I'm used to that. I'm always saying, I love God and I obey God and God is happy with me. Therefore, I'm happy. Therefore, I'm filled with joy. Therefore, I can enjoy life. I can enjoy my ministry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ha, 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 ha. I hope that you're all like that. Even when we have suffering, even when we, you have sickness, even if you, if you have pain, that you still say, God is with me. God can heal me. God can give me strength. Even when we have pain, God is still blessing me when I rely on Him. God is happy with me and God will bless me. Okay, and then prayer of dedication. I dedicate my life to loving and serving God and blessing the church. I offer my body. Lord, I dedicate my life to you. I dedicate my time to you. I dedicate my abilities to you, my spiritual gifts to you. Everything I have, I offer to you. I offer to you my money. Please use my life and my money. And listening to God, pay attention to the voices from God, you know, that God can speak to us through words or through thoughts. That when we pray, that sometimes we receive messages from God, that God can speak to us to give us ideas from God. So we'll pay attention to these thoughts that come up, 
Now these thoughts are not from our own thinking. We don't. We are not thinking about it, but it just came comes naturally, and it helps us in a situation or encourages us at, in a situation. And sometimes it's against our own will. For instance, sometimes we we're not ready to forgive yet, and then the voice says, "Forgive," and have compassion on the person. Uh, forget about his wrongdoings. So. That's not our own desire. So when we have these thoughts, it can come from God. You know, not generally, if the thoughts are against our thoughts, then generally that is from, from God. Okay, so we want to use these five kinds of prayer. Prayer of grace, to declare the grace of God, the blessings of God. And prayer of worship, that we're worshiping Him, loving Him, and holding on to Him. An interactive prayer, and if, whenever I pray, I know God is happy with me. God is blessing me. And prayer of dedication, that we dedicate my whole life to God, and listening to God, and paying attention to God. Mm -hmm.